Okay. Uh, my name is Phil Litchfield. I'm Megan Sipple. And uh, our A to J project was the uncontested divorce in North Carolina. Uh, we were working for uh, Legal Aid of North Carolina, and we worked closely with Gray Wilson on this project. Uh, Gray was great right off the bat. Uh, we, uh, she explained to us the issues that people had in North Carolina filling out the divorce forms, and she was uh, very great about getting back to us on all the questions we had about the issues. Um, just in general, I mean, these are kind of these are just statistics applied in North Carolina, but they're pretty standard throughout the U.S. We all know that there's a justice problem with uh, un uh, people in poverty getting adequate quality uh, legal legal help. Um, so 15.5% of the people in North Carolina live uh, below the poverty level. That's from the U.S. Census. And uh, there are, divorce is a common legal issue in North Carolina, 3.8% per 1,000 people were getting divorced every year. So it's kind of accounted for. Um, just, well, the A to J in general, as we all know, is a great uh, program for just making complex forms or redundant forms or just lengthy forms a lot more manageable. Not only for people who don't have such a high education, but for even intelligent, educated people who just aren't familiar with the legal field. I was, uh, I was actually at the, uh, the self-help web center in Chicago. There was a college-educated guy who came to help on, ask for help on a form. Because he did it all right, but it just didn't seem to make sense because the fee waiver in Illinois asks, you need to put your address maybe like four different times throughout a three-page form. And it just doesn't make sense to a rational human being that it's actually asking for this information over and over again. And it's the same thing with our form. Uh, we, the North Carolina divorce packet asks for the plaintiff's address four different times in nine pages, and you have to list all your children and their ages in two different places. And uh, through the A to J, we just ask these questions once, and it fills everything out for me. Uh, it's also nice when people go to the courthouse, they actually have the nine pages, and this is all they need. Uh, they don't get bounced from clerk to clerk, who doesn't know where to send them, they're not confused, they can just go in, turn this in, and then they're good to go. Uh, the divorce only, uh, this packet only covers uh, uncontested simple divorces. An uncontested divorce is just a divorce, amicable, both sides are agreeing to it. It doesn't resolve issues like alimony, child support, things like that. Uh, when we were speaking with Gray, one of the, other than the ge general issues like uh, punctuation, putting places in the right spots on the forms, one of the biggest issues people had were uh, North Carolina Legal Aid had with these uh, pro se litigants is that they're doing the divorce forms and not understanding that they're extinguishing certain rights. Because if you turn in this form and you get divorced and it's finalized, you can't claim alimony anymore because the person's not your spouse. And so uh, we tried to make it very clear in our uh, presentation uh, that they were, that they were uh, sacri extinguishing certain rights by finalizing divorce. Uh, to uh, file for a divorce in North Carolina, you need to fulfill two statutory requirements. You need to live in North Carolina for six months and live separate, separate and apart from their spouse for at least a year. Uh, separate and apart seemed kind of simple until I looked at the case law on it, and lawyers can litigate anything. Um, and there were all sorts of some were meaningless, but others were good what-if scenarios about what is separate and apart, what's not separate and apart, is just seeing someone socially or going to pick up the kids, does that count? And so what we basically tried to sum it up in just a few sentences, saying that uh, separate and apart, we have it right here actually, and we put it in the learn more, so people actually kind of get a feel for it. And so that's essentially a lot of North Carolina case law compressed into mm -hmm. a paragraph. Yeah, um, in reading it. A couple is separate and apart according to North Carolina law when at least one spouse leaves a marital home and does not intend to come back. The couple can still see each other socially. Uh, and this is a screenshot from our A to J production. <laughs> um, so this again just says uh, we got the uh, 
North Carolina statute section 50 from the general statutes is what covers uh, these forms. They, uh, the pro se litigants really have no need to look up the statutes from looking at the form anyway, but it's just a fun fact. Uh, this is uh, the screen that we had for alimony, just making sure that they knew that they were uh, sacrificing their rights. Uh, we made it not as a learn more because we kind of thought that those could get ignored, but we made it through it on a separate screen where you had to click through and kind of forces you to actually read it. And then this is our closing screen and this is our credits. Uh, another, uh, just one thing to point out, North Carolina Legal Aid also has a packet of information meant for pro se litigants filing for divorce, which was a great packet, but it didn't actually help with the uh, filling out the form itself. So the packet in tandem with this A to J should make the process a whole lot more easy for pro se litigants. And then Megan's going to run through a bit of our A to J. Yes, so now that Phil has covered for you the basic problem that we addressed, one moment, sorry. Um, I'm going to show you our A to J and address the major parts of it that are relevant for the problem to basically make this form. As you can tell, I mean, I don't know if you really can. I mean, it's nine pages. It's a pretty lengthy little packet here, and no one is going to want to sit down and do all of this. So our A to J really simplifies it. Yeah, we can pass it around for you all to look at. That was one completed using our the A to J and the hot dogs. Megan chose the variables, not me, just so you get that <laughs> clear. Okay, so the first ones that I want to show you are the qualifying statements. So as Phil mentioned, that you have to live in North Carolina for six months prior to being able to file this. And then also the separation, um, you have to be separated from your spouse for at least a year. So the first one, we just did a simple, yes? Does it cover same-sex marriage? It never um, says spouse or anything like that. I mean, I'm um, sorry, okay. Gender is never defined in there, right? means, so that's a good question. I'm not entirely certain. Yeah, if North Carolina allows legal divorces, this would, this would be the legal way to terminate the divorce. I don't so. think Carolina allows same-sex marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is just the simple yes or no, um, but I'm going to do the no to show you the more, because yes would just continue. No has us saying, you know, sorry, you don't qualify, and then if they choose to exit, instead of just sending them away or into blank space, um, we talked to our client um, in North Carolina, and they want us to send them here to lawhealthnc.org. So for them, you know, maybe the form wasn't right for them, maybe they could find something else on here. Um, obviously it says find legal help if they, you know, maybe need to contact an attorney. At least it's just somewhere else that we can send them instead of just feeding them nowhere. Okay, I'm gonna go back. And so say yes, they have lived in North Carolina for six months, then it gets to the separate and apart question. Um, as we mentioned, it has to be for a year. So we found a way in A to J. So, I mean, this date is in 2011. So if I hit continue, it'll let me go because that was over a year ago. But if I go back, and let's say we pick 2012 of this year. We made it so that A to J knows that you haven't been in there for a year because that's 2012, that was only a couple months ago. And again, the exit won't kick them out, it'll send them to the law help. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's see. The next one we want to talk about ah, is the kids. Well, this is the alimony again, just to show you, to reiterate, that if you said no, you haven't talked about alimony yet, again, that you might, that you will lose your rights if you haven't talked about alimony yet with your spouse and that you choose to file this form. But we still allow them to, because it's their choice. So continue. Then again, it goes into the name and gender. I'm going to skip on to the children. Well, actually, but we're going to talk about the address. Because here, since they've had to have lived in North Carolina for six months, we actually made a customized list of the counties in All North Carolina. 100 of them. There are 100 counties in North Carolina, but we made a list of all the counties for the litigants because again they have to be in North Carolina and we have it set so that North Carolina fills in as well. Sorry, I'm just going to skip on through to these the children. Okay, so if you say you have children together, 
on the form, it differentiates between if you have minor children, adult children, or no children. As Phil mentioned, this is a simple and contested divorce, so it doesn't get into custody, but the form does require that if you have minor children, you list their names and ages. So here we're going to say that yes, that we have children under the age of 18. We picked four children. Then this is where the loop begins. So it's, this is our first child. And then the age. And it continues through all the children. And it's a nice way to do it because it, we did it, so it says, you know, your fourth child, so you don't get confused. And then how old. And then, yeah, so that's basically it for the A to J that I want to show you. Let me just go through it so I can load it into the hot dogs. This is the maiden name. Um, and we didn't want to specify it for gender because some couples, it does go the other way. A man can take the woman's name. Um, but we still left it as maiden name. Um, but yes, so it's not, anyone can fill it out if you're male, female. This, you'll still see this question on the form. Explains the summons, you can pick a date. This is the same thing here where we restricted it where you can't, you can only pick a date in the future or today's date. You cannot go in the past. And then there's the end. Congratulations. So then, I'll just cancel that. And show you the hot dogs. Okay. So this, I'm gonna make it. Oops, that's not what I want. No. Oh, I'm sorry that it's not on the screen properly. However, this is what it looked like before you filled in the fields. So some of these, and on this first page, we had it always with the complaint mark and always with the divorce mark because if they fill out this form, they're getting a divorce and it's the complaint. And so this is the cover sheet. This is the complaint itself. Um, and as you probably all saw when we looked at the form, it is a lot of the same information. It's the defendant's name, the plaintiff's name, the marriage date, the separation date, and the county is everywhere. Um, I didn't show you that, but in our AJ we also do have a county lookup in case you know they don't remember what county they got married in or anything like that. And here's where the children come in. This was actually very difficult to finally figure out, but we have it so it'll fill down the first column with children and then the next column depending on how many children you have under the age of 18. And then to see the completed one is right here. So here, after I uploaded the answers, here they are. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, under the question about maiden name, what happens if the person filling out didn't change their name? Like, is there a learn more about, like, what if I didn't change my name? You can just say, you mean, um, like you said, do you want to go back to using your maiden name? Like, yeah. Well, I would think, well, what if I didn't change my name in the first place? What do I answer? Valid. Um, we could oh, probably make it. Oh, okay. So, no, no, it's not required. It's yeah. just this here. Are, hey, do you want to. Perform its actual checkbox. Would you like to change your name? Yes or no. And you can change it to your maiden name or the name of any husband you have that is still alive if you have a kid with them. Find the person I'm over, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So name, name. All, all was just the name you used before getting married. I mean, so I guess we could definitely add that, but yeah, otherwise I guess you would just hit no because you don't have a name to change it to. And then it would just move you on. Yeah. So that, that nuance that you just described might be good to put into it. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that was great.